Hey friends, welcome back into my kitchen. Today we're going to veganize one of the most well-known Chinese foods, I would say, which are dumplings. We're going to make vegan dumplings. I love to eat dumplings, but my mom always made them filled with meat. Now, as you guys know, I'm not 100% vegan, but I do like to eat as less meat and dairy as possible. So I decided to veganize traditional dumplings and I'm going to share the recipe with you guys. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to make the dough. Of course you can also buy ready-made dough that is already shaped into these round forms but it is always better or tastier to make your own dough. So I've already prepared my dough. The dough that I'm using today is in part made with whole wheat flours and the way I made it is I just mix the two different types of flours together, normal all-purpose and whole wheat and then added some water, mixed it, then kneaded the dough for about 10 minutes or so until the bowl was nice and clean, and then I let the dough rest for an hour. It gives the dough a more smooth texture and does make it more tastier. So my dough has been resting for an hour and we're going to move on to make the filling. Now for the filling, the main ingredients will be shiitake mushrooms, tofu, carrots, and green spring onion. So firstly, you're going to want to soak your shiitake mushrooms in some hot boiling water. Then we're going to move on to cut everything. You want everything to be nice and small so that it can seamlessly blend into the filling mixture. Now I have four small carrots here that I'm going to grate finely. I've already peeled, washed and peeled them. So now that you've grated your carrots, you're going to just place them in a bowl. Next up, we're going to cut our green spring onion. Ideally, you would want to use a little more. The spring onion is actually from my garden, but I didn't have enough or more, so this is all that I have. You just want to cut that really into really small pieces as well. And then we're also going to need garlic and ginger. We need to mince that. I I'm not going to do that because I already have this garlic ginger minced paste that I have ready to go in the fridge, but you would have to mince your garlic and ginger right now. Then we're going to continue on with our tofu. This is, I guess, semi-firm tofu, um, but it doesn't really matter as long as you don't use the super soft, super silken tofu. And for the tofu, we're going to cut this pretty small as well. You could even go as far as to crumble the tofu so it can really blend in together with the rest of the filling. So I'm even going to go in and take a bigger knife and just to kind of make everything a little bit smaller. So now, last but not least, we're going to cut up the shiitake mushrooms into tiny pieces as well. When you rinse and drain the shiitake mushrooms, you really want to make sure to squeeze out the excess juice. Let's cut it into very small pieces. So now that we've cut up all our ingredients, we're going to heat our pan, add a little oil, and we're going to fry our ingredients, at least the tofu, green onion, and the shiitake mushrooms. This is just to make sure that all the flavor gets out nicely and yeah, just to make it more fragrant. So first of all, we're going to add the tofu. We're also going to go ahead and add the green spring onions and the shiitake mushrooms and also your garlic and ginger. And the way you know it's done is when it smells incredibly good in your kitchen. Then you want to add that to your carrots. Now I want to add the rest of our seasonings. We're going to add some pepper, some soy sauce and sesame oil and a little bit of sugar. I'm going to mix all that up. So now that the filling is done, we're going to set this aside and continue working with our dough. So I have a floured work surface here and we're going to get out our dough, but not all of it. We're going to work one bit at a time. I'm going to get out maybe a quarter of the dough and then recover the rest so it does not dry out. So we're going to knead it a little bit. And what we ultimately want to do is to form a kind of sausage-like formation. It doesn't need to be too thin, about so. 
Then we're going to cut into it a piece, maybe, maybe about the size of two walnuts, but it is totally up to you how big you want your dumplings to be. So I have about six dumplings here and we're going to once again knead the dough a little bit and form it into a ball. Once we have a ball, we're going to press down with the palm of our hand and that's how we get a nice round shape. We're going to use a rolling pin. This is one specifically for making dumplings. This is a small one so that you can easily roll with your hand. So we're going to take our coin shaped dough and we're going to roll towards the middle, but then stop at the middle and roll back. Now you see we have rolled out this part and we're going to turn it about 45 degrees and roll again and back, but only towards the middle. And don't apply too much pressure. We don't want this to be super thin. Then once again, we're going to roll and roll back. Roll towards the middle and back. The reason why we're rolling towards the middle and back is because we want the middle to be slightly thicker than the outside. Because on the outside, we're going to fold and it's going to overlap and we don't want the outside to be too thick. So the middle is slightly thicker than the outside. And we're going to do that to the rest of the dough. I find making or folding, forming dumpling dough or just dough in general to be very soothing. So this is where you can kind of tune out, listen to a podcast, listen to some music, spend some time with your thoughts. So now that we have our dumpling skin ready, we're going to get our filling. So now it comes to the dumpling folding and don't be scared or worried. It doesn't need to be perfect. It can actually be any form you want. I wouldn't say that I make super pretty dumplings, so it doesn't really matter. All that matters is the inside, that it tastes good. So I get about a, depending on your dumpling skin size, but I get about a tablespoon worth of filling. Now, if you're starting out, I would recommend starting with less filling. Of course, the more filling, I personally would say the better it will taste, but the more filling, the more difficult it will be to close your dumpling. What you want to do is you want to meet one side with the side opposite, pinch closed, and then you're left with two open sides. You're going to meet the open end with the pinch as so, and then fold one side of that closed and pinch. And we have another smaller opening we're going to pinch once again. And make sure you pinch everything nice and hard so that it is also nice and sealed. Otherwise your filling will leak out when you cook it or boil it in water. And we're going to do the same on the other side. So meet it up, fold one side of that, and then the same process. And there we have a cute little, not too pretty, but okay dumpling. But of course the shape is totally dependent on how you want to do it. You can do any shape you want. I feel like many different families have different folding techniques. So there's no really right or wrong. There are also a lot of people that just fold up as so and then pinch everything closed. This is fine, totally fine as well. So now that you've finished your dumplings, you can either freeze them just as they are on a parchment lined tray in your freezer and you have dumplings to, ready to go whenever you want, or you can immediately go ahead and cook them. So there are multiple ways of cooking your dumplings, either steaming, boiling in water or frying in a pan. Maybe you know those as pot stickers. So the ways I mostly eat them is boiled in water or fried in a pan. Boiling in water is really simple. You just throw them in boiling water. I do it the lazy way. I just wait for the dumplings to float up and let that cook for another two, three minutes and then they're done. It doesn't take longer than five minutes in total, but I'm going to show you guys how to pan fry them. This is, I think, my favorite way of eating dumplings. So for pan frying your dumplings, you're going to add a little bit of oil into a pan, heat that up and then add your dumplings, just the face side down into the pan. And you're just going to let that sit for a while. Once the underside that is touching the pan is brown or slightly golden brown, you're going to add a little bit of water. 
and then we're going to place the lid on that and let that cook until the water has completely evaporated. So when you hear that sound, when you hear it kind of sizzling, you know that the water has evaporated. You can of course always go back and check a couple of times. Yes, you can see that the water is pretty much gone. And that's how you know when your dumplings are done. So this is it, the vegan dumplings are finally done and they look so delicious. The skin of it will be a tiny bit browner than your traditional dumplings, but that is because we made it whole grain and a little healthier. And yeah, you can eat this straight away like this. You can eat these cold, you can eat these hot, you can eat these with a spicy chili sauce, however you want it. I really like it with black vinegar. I don't have that right now, but that's okay. I have a little tray with a tiny bit of soy sauce and some apple cider vinegar works great as well. So we're going to go ahead and try this now. Dipping in a tiny bit of sauce. Mmm. So delicious. Mm, so good. And even though we don't have meat in this, it still has so much flavor coming from the shiitake mushrooms, the seasoning, and just the fact that we kind of fried everything to make it a little bit more fragrant. I'm so happy that I made a bunch and can enjoy this now. As I said, I highly recommend making more, putting it into the freezer and having it whenever you feel like it. It is food that is comforting, delicious, easy to make, quick to make, and just so good. And now you have a healthier, veganized version. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I absolutely love this recipe. If you want to make this as well, the recipe will be down below. And if you liked it, then be sure to give it a thumbs up. That really helps me out. And check out my channel for more cooking videos and other types of videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.